And welcome to Enzyme Mental. I'm Jason Carter. Vitamins K and D share a unique and significant partnership and are an absolute must in everyone's daily supplement routine. Vitamins K and D are both fat-soluble vitamins, meaning they dissolve in fat and are stored in the liver and fatty tissue. Other fat-soluble vitamins include vitamins A and E. Most of us don't get an adequate supply of either of these vitamins from food, so it is important to supplement. Vitamins K and D each have their primary functions in the body, which are primarily blood clotting and regulating calcium levels. However, at optimal levels, these vitamins go far beyond these basic functions and together are a power duo for bone and cardiovascular health. In fact, you really shouldn't take one without the other. Most people are somewhat familiar with vitamin D and its far-reaching effects on health. At minimal levels, vitamin D is necessary for the bones to absorb calcium, but at optimal levels, something closer to 50 nanograms per milliliter or higher, vitamin D influences thousands of genes, including genes that promote or prevent disease. And also, vitamin D activates the immune system and reduces inflammation. Low vitamin D levels are associated with a plethora of chronic diseases, including cancer, autoimmune diseases, infectious diseases, and also cardiovascular disease. For most people, blood clotting comes to mind when they think of vitamin K, and this is primarily vitamin K's basic function. However, at optimal levels, which most people are lacking, vitamin K does far more. There are two main forms of vitamin K, K1 and K2. Some researchers insist that these are not simply two forms of the same vitamin, but rather two entirely different vitamins because their effects on health are so different. K1, as I've told you, is found in leafy green vegetables and is a key player in maintaining healthy blood clotting, while K2, the more active form, is found in animal-based foods and natto, a popular Japanese food made from fermented soy, and its role extends far beyond blood clotting, influencing heart health, bone health, brain health, and also possibly protecting us from cancer. An important function of vitamin K2 is to activate proteins that control cell growth, meaning that vitamin K2 plays a role in cancer protection. When we don't take enough K2, we put ourselves at a tremendous risk for osteoporosis and heart disease, among other conditions. The deficiency rates for vitamin K2 are similar to the deficiency rates for vitamin D, and this accounts for, for as much as 80% of people in the U.S., Although animals can convert K1 into K2, humans actually require preformed K2 from their diet to maintain optimal health. Vitamin D and K seem to have an especially important working relationship, particularly when it comes to bone health and cardiovascular health. It's been known for a long time that vitamin D helps the body to absorb calcium. However, vitamin K2 is necessary to direct calcium into the bones where it belongs and away from soft tissues, including the arteries. K2 does this by activating a protein hormone called osteocalcin that is needed to bind calcium to the bones and prevent it from depositing in the arteries. Vitamin D and vitamin K also work together to increase matrix GLA protein, which is known as MGP, and this protein is responsible for protecting blood vessels from calcification. Vitamin D is needed to make osteocalcin and MGP, but vitamin K is necessary to activate those proteins to do their jobs. Researchers have postulated that the present recommended daily allowance for K is far too low to ensure full activation of MGP, putting a large number of people at risk for arterial calcification. This is especially true for those who supplement with calcium and vitamin D, but are lacking vitamin K2. Clinical evidence has shown an association between calcification of the arteries and osteoporosis, suggesting a link between vascular health and bone metabolism. Researchers have also said that one of the most relevant factors in the development of osteoporosis and hypertension, which is often related to arterial calcification, are vitamin D and vitamin K deficiency. 
And so as far as how much vitamin D and vitamin K you should take, try it this way. For every 1,000 IU of vitamin D you take, try pairing that dose with around 100 micrograms of K2. So if you want to think of it this way, if you take 5,000 IU of vitamin D, you want to take around 500 micrograms of K2 at the same time. You do want to take both of these vitamins with a meal that has fat, and ideally try to look for them in a soft gel. And as I've told you before, one complicating factor with vitamin K particularly is that most vitamin K supplements are actually dry, which means they're in a capsule or a tablet, and they need dietary fat to be activated. There are occasionally vitamin K supplements sold in soft gels, and there are also occasionally blends of vitamin D and vitamin K2 in a soft gel. You will find D and K2 together, but as I said, most of them are unfortunately dry. So just make sure that you're taking D and K with adequate dietary fat, and the best way to do that is to take both of these vitamins with a full meal. Thanks for watching. I'm Jason Carter, and I'll see you next time on Enzyme Mental. Stay healthy.